Well, Baywatch Tea Boy today. Uh, rare, rare occurrence. Rare is a rare occurrence. Very rare. But for good reason. We have got a new series coming, which is Baywatch Behind the Scenes. And this is what goes on at Baywatch, not just bait making. Obviously, some fantastic tea making as well. Earl Grey. I don't think that's fantastic tea. Earl Grey, mate. Look. Many would argue that is the worst tea ever. Well, they can argue all they want, but I don't know. For the more discerning palate, Earl Grey decaf. The Where's more that? discerning Where's palate. That? Where's that? <laughs> anyway, so, Baitworks. We're going to be bringing you loads of bits and pieces behind the scenes, as the, as the title suggests. Um, not only stuff from the factory, the events that we're doing. We've got a little tank, uh, we've got a tank test. Uh, with carp, so we can bring you loads of bits and pieces that we're dropping in there with really interesting stuff. And also, there's going to be some lake management um, in there as well. Um, more sort of draining down stock ponds, moving fish into the lake. So, uh, hopefully, all this combined will make some really interesting content. And, and some of the characters here that work for us as well. So, we're bringing you, it's not going to be just me, there's going to be other guys that work here as well. So, hopefully, that will uh, be of interest. And yeah, look forward to bringing you um, bits and pieces. But for now, Cup of tea, the boy is thirsty, and thank you for putting the switch again. Not, <laughs> not a good start. Not a good start. <laughs> well, today was fishery management day, and it was about to get a little bit muddy. Right, so a bit of a plan for the day is to get the pond drain, which we've pretty much done now. And now we're going to get out the fish and grade them, see what we've got in here, and importantly take out all the little fish and they're going to another stock pond, so it gives the bigger ones a bit more, uh, bit more room. Um, some of these may go into the main lake as well because um, they're off size, which is good. So uh, we're going to try to do our best to get them out nice and quick. Is it raining today, which is an absolute bonus. Yeah. We've got the master netsman, Shane's yeah. over there. Yeah, doing... Look at that, he's straight in. Yeah, he knows that. what he's doing. That's a messy day's work, so we're all going to, well, I'm going to put the camera down in a minute and we'll set up a little production line and Shane on net, I'll carry the fish, Mark away. By the end of the day, we'll know what we got. It'll be a long day. <laughs> well, the bigger ones were looking incredible and it's amazing what a year can do. They can go from looking pretty average, normal small carp to really looking at them and thinking, yes, that one has got potential. Fish is that, mate? You know, this is one of our home growners. This one, is yeah. it? This one's that's um, spawned from the stock pond that we've grown on. And this is one of about I don't know twenty of these fish, twenty-five. It's got a lovely length. Yeah, it's not yet as, isn't it? Loads of length on it. Yeah. Potential, yeah. potential. Yeah, that's what we like. Well, as it's behind the scenes at Baitworks. This is about as behind the scenes as it gets. Look at Mark's little pack lunch. Look at that. Look at that. He's got a cucumber sandwich, a few cashew nuts, orange apple, and a banana. He looks like he's packed off ready for school. I wonder if Claire made that for him, or he genuinely made that himself. Oh, looks like he's going on a school trip. Don't tell him that. I'll hide that, put that back. They just kept coming, a production line of carp. Some had done really well, others maybe not so, but that was the purpose of today, it was to really get a good look of every single carp that we knew was in there because we'd put them in there, back in there the year before, and really decide what the next course of action would be. Would they need to stay in the pond for another year, or would they have a new home? I think that completes all the bigger ones, Mark, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it, actually. It's not loads and loads, which is good. So, so now I've got to get all the little ones out and then go through these lot and see, um, see what's what. But there's a few there which are going to the main lake, which would be nice. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Mate, they're the problems, the little ones. Loads of silt, yeah. loads of little carp. Yeah, loads of mouths to feed. Mate, look at the state of our hands already. Loads of little mouths to feed. Sounds like my home. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you rather be, though? I'd rather be here, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Jesus. Ten 
Well, over the next couple of hours, Mark and Shane did a sterling job and eventually we were making great progress in netting all of the small carp. Now, of course, the problem we had today was all caused to having the perfect environment. Not only do carp spawn incredibly successful in a stock pond, but there's no predators. In a natural environment, it's a totally different story. When carp spawn, as you probably know, very rarely do they survive. You've got herons, you've got pike, you've got perch, you've got numerous predators that usually put paid to any of those spawn surviving. But of course, in a stock pond, it's a totally different story. So these are the problem. I say problem, it's a nice problem to have, but when you've got so many little ones like that, you can see how it can absorb the biomass, the oxygen levels, and cause a bit of a problem. So we said it yesterday, Shane, we want to know is there a carp contraception on the market? <laughs> yeah, heron. The <laughs> heron, <laughs> yeah. Some lovely carp in there. They're literally uh, blueprints for the future. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Right, let's move them into the net. So we've got the smaller fish. They're going in the left-hand net. And then the larger ones with the senior in the right-hand net. So these two will have uh, new stock ponds or potentially new homes in the lake here by the end of the day. Gotta be cup of tea time, Shane, isn't it? Yeah. Re is. Refreshments. <laughs> You've got a man down with a bit of mud <laughs> behind his contact lens. That's what I'm saying, I'm just doing mascara, mate. Yeah. Doing my lash, make sure my lashes are on point. What I'm more concerned about is Shane managed to give you some um, contact lens solution but look at that mirror Let's spin it around hang on hang on clinique mirror where is that from hey eh? wait you where, need it mate where is that from just blind people <laughs> more more questions than answers i'd say with that yeah the car pangler with a clinique mirror in their bag <laughs> oh, no. Well, look at this one. This is a really special little fish, not massive, but my little girl Darcy caught this one on a float about oh, a year and a half ago. And it was tiny, it was about that big. And I got a picture of it at home with Darcy holding it. And I said to her, what we do, we put that fish in the stock ponds, we see it through the cycle and it end up hopefully in the main lake. So today he's gonna go in the main lake or he or she, but yeah, lovely fish. Darcy the carp. Yeah. Let's have a look. A very distinguishable fish. It's almost like a fully scaled on the back end, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. That's a nice little story. Yeah. What's it like the other side? Look at that. Picked out because have them lovely little scales at the back, loads of them. Yeah, lovely. So fingers crossed, you survive. Well, this is uh, this is a turn up for the books. Old Brian is only stuck in the silt, and he needs a helping hand. I mean, I mean, how's my favourite Shane O'Grady? Yes. Silt hands. AKA Teen Wolf. <laughs> if you've ever done any of this sort of work, you realise that the uh, the silt is like glue. Once you sink in it past your ankle and the waders. It literally sucks you in. And you can't move. You literally can't move. It's like cement around your waders. Come on, I thought you guys. Yeah. Oi! Fuck it. Jesus. Maybe he's got a dodgy uh... hip. Yeah. Yeah, you watch my hips. He had a car accident yeah, once, you know. That almost unscrewed my hips that day. <laughs> 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 Look at the state of you two. <laughs> Oh, God. Hard work, Shane. Yeah. Yeah. Macarin. We, we we'll let you know what it's like. Right. Yeah. Yeah, let me, know, uh, let me know when you need a hand. Well, we're getting towards the end of the afternoon, I think, Mark, aren't we? Yeah, mate, absolutely. Grade in a couple of these. And it looks like these ones, instead of going back in the stock pond for another year, they'll have a new home. They're going to have a new home, mate. Yep, they're going to go into the, uh, into the lake, straight in the pond. Yeah, lovely. Let's have a look. Yeah, so a nice little set of fish done really well. 
Yeah. Fantastic. Lovely. That one's very unique with the scales on its shoulder, isn't that it? That one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four scales, big scales. That so it's it's similar. grows and, and fills out a little bit and has its body proportion. Yeah, similar on the other side as well. Yeah. Just really, totally different, isn't it? Really unique. Nice. Really cool carp. The question every Baitworks customer wants to know is, have you got hairier hands than Mark? Let's have a look. Well, yeah, but he's been burning them off, so it's oh, not yeah, quite fair. That's a comb over that one. It's a comb over. <laughs> <laughs> comb over. <laughs> Mate, there's not much in it, no. I'm not going to lie. Look, look, he's so hairy, look, a wasp is trying to nest in it. <laughs> Get Mark's slim belly out. <laughs> yeah, the new look Mark. New look, <laughs> new trim. Fight and fit. Yeah. Right. Well, welcome to Baitworks HQ. I'm sat on my knees, probably not gonna do me arthritis any good, the old aches and pains of a carp angler. But as you can see behind me, we got some, well, you probably don't know actually because they might not be in focus. But these are some new pop-ups that are bringing out this week and we've got a whole range of them which I'll come on to in a minute and this is the reason why I'm here today. But last week we went to Hatchmore Fishery. Now I don't know if you've ever been but if you haven't highly recommended a beautiful complex of lakes in North Devon and the main reason was to get a few friends together and do a bit of product filming at the same time but sort of come together with guys we haven't seen for about a year and I'll tell you what Mark got off to a really quick start. Well, while the rest of us haven't even got a tent peg out of our bag, Brian is sneaking one out in the margins. Oh, mate, there was, uh, there was a few fish about, so I thought time was at the essence before they all do the off. <laughs> yeah. That's what usually happens, isn't it? So, Mate, we could do a great job and make them do the off at a barbecue. Well, that's it. There's going to be a lot of noise and clattering about, and uh, yeah, couldn't, yeah dropped, dropped it in the edge and watched the watched fish come in. Didn't watch it take the bait, but watched it spook. Amazing. So, yeah, really good. Do. Really good, yeah. Look at that. Booked in the. Put it inside, that'll do. The carno, is it? No. There we go, he's out of the way. Oh, mate, that is a hell of a car. This is lovely. Oh. There we go. That's a wicked car. That's a nice account opener, mate. Yeah, mate, that'll do, wouldn't it? It's beautiful. Five minutes you've been here. <laughs> Be nice if it was easy all the time like that, wouldn't it? We can tell you've only been here five minutes because your hair is still impeccably quiffed. Good, that's what we like yeah. to see. Straight out of the shower. That's what we like to see. A few hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Look at him. That's a really nice carp, that one. Look at that. Sorry, that. Lovely. Yeah, do. Go home now. That's it. Job done. Barbecue on. As is often the way I found on those uh, exclusive lake bookings, and Hatchmore is no different. Because they have a swap over day, you know, there's a booking and maybe there's a little rest day, those fish suddenly drop their guard during that rest day. I think they know they're not being angled for. So we found often the best chance on, on an exclusive booking lake is to get the rod in really quick because almost their guard is down. And obviously Mark proved that. Uh, and as I wandered down to the bottom lake, I was fishing a different lake, I seen some feeding activity, just the odd pinprick bubble in close, but a few handfuls of bait right in the edge, and what, what unfolded was like an eruption, a jacuzzi, you know, that, that, that moment where you, the heart is in the mouth situation, so uh, yeah, it wasn't long before I got them feeding really well. Well, have a look what happened. I put a couple of handfuls of bag mix, literally just here. And they are fizzing up and going absolutely ballistic. That's a lovely looking carp. Well, after all that uh, feeding activity, all that fizzing on the spot, didn't take long, a couple of minutes. I thought they were gonna do me to be fair, because they're renowned in here for being a little bit tricky, but yeah, that's a good start to the trip. Nice one, mate, lovely. An even better start that Liam's cooking some barbecue food. So we'll get this on back. We fed and watered. Oy. Steady, steady, steady. 
can see, the main reason uh, for us getting together is that we can light that barbecue in the evening, we can share a beer and just generally catch up on life. I mean, we're all busy and trying to get us all at the same point in the same place on the same location. Believe it or not, there's only five of us um, is really difficult. We only ever manage it about once a year. I don't know what happens the older you get. Time seems to go so fast. I just don't know where it goes. But it was wonderful to sit down, chew the fat, have a couple of uh, overcooked Giles chicken wings. Blame you. Uh, but it was still nice. And before we knew it, it was time for bed. And uh, but the next day, what unfolded was sort of beyond our expectations, I would say. And uh, yeah, the first carp to grace the bank was an absolute monster, but have a look how it all unfolded. Mate, you look like a drained rat. Mate, I was soaking, I had that last fish up there, literally in that pouring rain, and it didn't stop, so. <laughs> yeah, and then this one, this one's just gone off. Crazy. Mate, warts and all, this is behind the scenes of Baitworks in yeah. full swing. <laughs> Jesus, Giles, those pants are a bit psychedelic. What they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's quite a lot going on here. Tartan socks. <laughs> nice fish, that, ain't he? That's nice, isn't he? My goodness. Oh, look at his mouth. Uh, 40 pounds six. six. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Get in there. Oh mate, that's he awesome. Looks yes. Thank you very much. Yes. 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 <laughs> Got to basically see what the Bryant's using. Can't let him get away with any wizardry. What is it, Liam? Can you dissect this rig for me? Hmm. It's like some sort of fluorocarbon with a size six. Choddy. What's, what's your verdict? A little... Seen it all before, haven't they? Seen <laughs> A 40 pounder, who would have thought it? I mean, Mark was, uh, as you can imagine, he's absolutely chuffed. And uh, you don't expect to catch a real big one like that, especially when it's uh, a bit of a social, um, you know, the fishing probably was slightly down the pecking order in terms of getting some work bits done. What come first, work, barbecue, and then probably the fishing. So it was a real nice surprise to, to land that real big one and it was nice to share the moment there. Um, but the next day it just kicked off in style. We caught so many carp and it would, be, uh, it would just be overlaying carp to this dialogue on this video um, and it would probably get a bit boring, but we caught loads. I think we caught about 16 or 17 carp. They were wonderful, wonderful fish. And uh, as you're, you're, I'll drop a few over this video, you'll get to see them. That's the second one of a little quick flurry of bites. Yeah, another lovely, scaly, hatch more carp. Plenty of action and fun to be had here. Yeah, run out of clothes, didn't I? I run out of clothes. Run out of clothes. You look like, <laughs> you're like a hiking magazine. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Whose clothes have you got on? Well, Giles' bottoms. Uh, they ain't never fitting you. Well, I had to stretch them down a bit. Obviously, his legs are much, much shorter than mine, but I've had to manage to pull them down and stretch them a little bit. It's yeah. Wet. And then what? And then, well, then there's a bit of get up, isn't it? That's in the back of the van. Basically. Nothing wrong with this. Spare clothes? Yeah. Well, good, mate. Well, good. The infamous Giles. Nobody knows what he looks like until now. That's it. Loving the odd orange gilet. <laughs> Um, too many carp really, too many carp to include just a procession of fish but before we knew it, it was packing up after our two days at the wonderful Hatchmore and it was back to where we are today, Baitworks HQ because it's another busy week, it's always busy which is great and it, you know I, I much prefer being busy but today um, I have got to get these little beauties on the website so uh, I don't know if they're focusing in yeah so these are our new um, pop-up mix and they're in a 12 mil so as you have known over the years we've sold products called toppers now they have been pop-ups but they've been small and the reason we called them toppers is because we didn't want people thinking that a 10 mil bait would hold up a chod so we often said that they were ideal for snowman rigs etc etc but these little beauties are now uh, ready to go and I've got a get them on the website today, write all the descriptions, take the pictures, get them on the website 
uh, and we've revamped the pop-up mix. These are really mega buoyant little baits now, um, and I guess we've uh, we've tweaked them somewhat. Exactly the same flavors, exactly the same attractor profiles, exactly the same products in the range, but just a slightly more buoyant pop-up mix. Why? Because today's rigs have become really heavy, haven't they? I guess over the years you could argue that it's uh, it's all a bit jingle jangly these days. When you think of the, the the in vogue fashionable rig, which is the Ronnie rig, you've got a hook swivel attached to the hook, which is heavy in its own right. You've got the hook in itself, and you've got a ring swivel often on the shank. So it's a lot of metal really for a tiny little pea-sized bait to hold up. So we've revamped them, and uh, as you'll see, I'll show you in a minute. I've left some some baits in the, in some glasses and some tanks. These little 12 mils, we've upped the size a little bit, are now holding Ronnie rigs up for well over 24 hours. So uh, yes, I've got to get them on the website. I'm sure that'd be a great success. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll quickly whip down and show you uh, show you Shane, because hopefully I think he's making some of these today. Um, and uh, he's the man behind these, as well as Mark. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a labor of love. It's a very messy job, but the result is a pot full of bites. So uh, yes, without further ado, busy day. Well, we get lots of questions on the social media channels through Facebook and Instagram around the texture and the firmness of our bait. So, as Mr. Bryant here is on the tools, we've just rolled plenty of Atlantic heat and that's ready for bagging. I thought I'd collar him unannounced and ask him why we do and how we boil and why we do what we do. So, put that on, mate. That's the microphone there. Ooh. Okay. You wouldn't have heard any of that, mate, but... What's that? I'm, uh, basically, <laughs> I'd like a bit of an insight, sorry, unannounced, to interrupt you on your day. Yeah, yeah. About uh, our boiling process, because I know our bait is uh, probably a bit softer than the majority of baits on the market. Yep. And uh, it's for very good reason. So, uh, as you are sorting this lot out... Yeah. yeah. And it's ready for bagging, I thought it was a good time to collar you. Yeah, well... Yeah, our baits are a little bit softer, but they've always been ant name like to be fair. Um, given the choice, I'd sell it as paste balls, but in this day and age where it needs to be, you know, go on a, hook, uh, go on a hair rig and be catapulted out or thrown sticked out, you've got to make them a bit firmer. So, begrudgingly, we have to boil them. Um, but there are ways where you can um, still keep intact, you know, all the delicate proteins that we put in there. Uh, all the liquid package, we want to preserve that. We don't want to nuke that with loads and loads of heat because that will denature and render all those products ineffective. So uh, the way we've done that, you know, all of our baits, when you fill them, they have got a nice sort of, they've got, they're still firm, but they've got a little bit of softness to them. If you just break them open, like this one, then on the inside you've got almost, it's not paste-like, but it's a very soft feeling. Um, little structure to them, a very soft structure. So it enables us to do that, the boil times, instead of boiling at 100 degrees, which typically everyone does, we boil at 85 degrees. And that means that um, the skin of the bait gets 85 degrees, but actually if you used to put a, from, uh, a temperature gauge in the middle of our boilers, then you would be, uh, during the boiling process, we don't get above 60, degree, 60 degrees in the middle of the bait. So that doesn't activate the binder systems, keeps it all nice and soft, and soft and pliable, and importantly, gives us a nice skin around it so we can functionally use it, but doesn't denature anything on the inside of the bait. So what happens is when you put it in a glass of water, overnight the bait can um, absorb water through the ingredients that we use, and then you've got the solubility factor of the baits where you've got food signals flooding out, so you get a nice little halo around the bait. So, yeah, that's the reason we've done it. I've always done it, and um, yeah, for, for me, that's probably uh, the best way of keeping everything intact and making sure that what we make over there in the paste form translates and goes out into the old lake and that. So yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Mate, like that. Sorry yeah. I interrupted your day. Sorry. What about, um, well, I've got you. Yeah. What about digestibility? Because I know we've all seen our bait when it's being fed, you know, on mass, not necessarily on mass, but you know, when it's going into a lake, yeah. Uh, we've all caught carp and it's passing through the vent really quickly. Um, uh, what's your views on sort of the solubility versus digestibility? When the bait is naturally softer like we produce, yeah. do you think that uh, for a carp in terms of digestibility, that also ticks a big attractive box? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So if 
from digestibility we mean what the fish can extract from the bait and certainly a bait that's breaking down quicker, softer and the fish can utilise more rather than a solid or really, really firm bait, that's then, and you say about passing through the fish, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that digestibility as such, that's more the gut transit time as the bait goes through at a quick rate. Um, so our baits, because they're so soft in their nature and have a spice element, they do move through the fish uh, at a good, a good pace, for want of a better word. Um, but you would find that if you had rock hard, really, really firm baits that don't suck in water and uh, they're quite difficult for the fish to deal with. So in terms of digestibility, that comes down to you know, the, the ingredients that's used in the bait. Um, I use a lot of soluble products within the bait range. Um, generally, they are uh, a very high sort of protein content, which are easily accessible, easily absorbed by the fish's, you know, the fish's gut transit. So, um, yeah, making the bait soft just aids all that, just helps yeah, everything yeah. for the going for the fish and for transit time as well. Do you want a cup of tea? Mate, I love a cup of tea. I've just got to move a couple of these, got a few other bits of that, and I'll come in. All right, Earl Grey? Pathetic. Always. Pathetic. Pathetic.